Hello everyone, and welcome to my Soap's official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Nina is at Alex's office and is attempting to connect onto the computer but encountering problems. Drew appears unexpectedly, and she informs him that she does not have time for him since she is attempting to access this computer in order to post her gossip column for publication in the next edition. Drew reminds out that Alex's computer password is on a sticky note on her desk. Nana uses it to get into the computer and post her column. She informs Drew she'll be leaving and that he may wait here for Alexis. He adds that he is coming to visit her and wonders if she enjoys her new work. She claims it's not what she wants to be doing, and Alexis despises all of her ideas. Drew wonders whether she misses Crimson. Of course, Nina misses Crimson and refers to it as her baby. But it did not prepare her for this work. He claims that although selling falsehoods about beauty and fashion is one thing, lying in a newspaper is impossible because you would be detected. Nena questions why he is asking her about Crimson, since she thinks Carly and his pillow talk about returning it to her. Drew confesses that he dismissed Carly, and Mena is startled. She thinks things couldn't have gone well and suddenly exclaims, Oh my gosh, Carly dumped you. She thinks Carly dumped him 30 seconds after Jason returned. He just swears it wasn't like that. She knows he's still upset with her. So would he actually give Crimson back to her? He hasn't decided whether he wants to let it die or not. But he doesn't want his name associated with failure. Nan is happy with Carly's name being linked to the magazine's failure. He won't do that to Carly, but he does tease her with the thought that if she returns to Crimson, she'll regain some of the respect she's lost. However, Carly has already begun work on the next issue, so they will need to collaborate on that one. Nina refuses to have her name featured in a magazine full with Carly's motorbike fashion ideas. Drew responds, fine, I'll let the magazine die, and starts to walk away, but Nina stops him. Sasha models for Belpo, a fashion magazine, during a deception photo session, and the rep is there. He's not pleased, calling Sasha too approachable. Lucy pauses the shoot to provide Sasha some notes. She begs her to pretend she doesn't want to be here and that she's doing them a favor. The session is still not going well, so Sasha stops it and asks the magazine rep what he wants from her. He believes it isn't her, but it won't work for what he needs. He excuses himself, and Sasha assumes they have the morning free. Cody arrives at the deception office to discover Maxie, Tracy, and Brooklyn discussing new safety standards with Spinelli. Maxie expected him to be with Sasha, but he says it's a solo shoot today, so she's accompanied by Lucy. Tracy giggles at the troubles Lucy is sure to cause. The discussion is cut short when Maxie is summoned by an irate representative from the firm behind the shoot and informed that it has been canceled. Maxie believes everything is oak after her call, but Brooke Lynn argues otherwise since Cody texted Sasha and discovered Belpo had canceled the shoot. Lucy and Sasha arrive, and Tracy inquires as to what Lucy did to get the shoot canceled. Sasha claims it wasn't Lucy. The creative director wasn't pleased with how things were going, and nothing she could do could remedy the difficulties. Lucy argues that Sasha is simply too pure. Lucy warns her not to take this the wrong way, but Sasha's images are just too beautiful. Cody says this is ridiculous, and Sasha is stunning. Lucy doesn't dispute that, but she lacks the intrigue and edginess that publications seek. Tracy gets summoned to the hospital for a board meeting and departs. Maxie informs Lucy that she chose Sasha as the face of deception, thus she cannot force her to change her appearance. Lucy believes they might need a second face. Spinelli receives a call from Michael and excuses himself from the meeting. Cody speaks up for Sasha and says if they are replacing Sasha, then he won't be a part of this firm either. Lucy isn't going to put up with a stable lad who merely posed for a few shots and talked. She also claims that Sasha isn't a particularly good model and that they just let her stay because she was pleased. Maxie claims it is not true. Cody tells Lucy that he has never despised a job more than this one. 
while cuddling alpacas and pretending to smile. Cody claims Lucy does not have to dismiss him, so he quits. Lucy informs him he can't since he has a contract. Cody urges her to sue him and runs out. Maxie believes they can give Cody some time to calm down before smoothing things out. Sasha claims she knows Cody and that he will not return since he has made up his mind. Lucy believes the beauty industry is challenging, and she hopes Sasha isn't insulted by what she said, since her attractiveness was never in doubt. Sasha was not insulted, but hearing Cody describe modeling as exhausting and tedious made her realize she felt the same way. She is considering quitting as well. TJ queries Heather in her hospital room about certain gaps in her medical records before the surgery. TJ gets paged and walks out. Heather is left with Laura, and she reflects on how different her life was years ago. Heather says it was good of Laura to come, but she does not have to remain. Laura believes that no one should be alone before surgery, and there aren't many Webbers left, so they should stay together. Heather is relieved she can recall how she was. Heather mentions Esme and how much she misses her. Heather believes Laura despises Esme. Laura didn't hate Esme. She despised some of her actions, particularly the most recent. Heather can't help but wonder whether her life might have been better if she had made better decisions. Heather wonders whether she was always this crazy. Laura claims she was always willing to take chances and pursue her dreams, that she was not insane. Laura describes this as a more recent development. TJ interrupts and announces that they are ready for Heather in the oar. Heather wants to know what happens next if the procedure is successful. Will her life finally improve, only for the DA to sentence her to a jail across the country? Laura is unsure if she has any choices. Heather claims that everyone in California jails has cable TV, so she can at least watch her shows. Heather is taken to surgery, and Kevin arrives to check on Laura. Laura claims she's been so concentrated on disliking Heather or being terrified of her for so long. But what if she wakes up as someone else? Kevin claims that mental illness is a tricky issue and that the cobalt has poisoned her for so long that her negative habits of thinking have been imprinted on her brain. But he is not a neurologist, so anything is conceivable. Laura has previously discussed her personal struggles with mental health, but she had individuals who helped her recover. Laura wonders how Heather's life might have been different if she had someone to help her. She doubts if Heather is really guilty for the atrocities she did as a result of the poisoning. Kevin can't believe all of Heather's sins are being disregarded, but Laura knows she was never this wild. Kevin believes she has a heart of gold because she cares about Heather despite everything she has done. Kevin agrees to look into any instances that have been reversed based on psychological exams. Dion meets Liz at the nurse's station and informs her that there is a discrepancy in the med storage area. They are short on medications that the system indicates they should have. Willow listens in and texts Michael that they need to meet. Liz reviews the inventory and believes it may have been a simple reporting error, and the pills lost aren't something someone could sell on the street, simply antibiotics. Liz investigates the situation speaks with Terry over the phone, and concludes that this is simply a reporting error. Dion asks Liz, what if this isn't a reporting error and the medications are gone? Liz claims that would signal their system is insecure and she may lose her job as a result. Willow goes on a break and meets Michael at the quarter main stables. She claims that the medications she used to treat Jason have been marked as missing, and Liz will have to account for the inconsistencies. Michael says they will work it out. Willow cannot see any way out of this for them or Jason. Willow's mental state worsens, and she thinks Agent Cates will begin to probe them. Michael reminds her that Jason defended him while he was an adolescent in prison, so he must stand with him now and urges Willow to do the same. Michael phones Spinelli and asks if he can get into the GH pharmacy system. Thanks for watching if you like this video, so please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any updates.